So here's the deal. Recently, wireless classroom technology has been the talk of the town, as schools are encouraging teacher mobility so they can better engage their students. And one of those tools is the document cam. So we're going to take a look at all the wireless dot cam options out there and figure out which one is the best. Okay, okay, I know, we're hover cam. And you're probably thinking, we're just going to say our document camera is the best. And you're right. But instead of just telling you, let me show you why. See, video doesn't lie. So without further ado, let's take a look at all the options out there and see why the Hovercam Ultra 10 is, by far and away, the best wireless document camera out there. All right, let's meet our contestants. Hovercam's Ultra 10, Elmo's MA1, Avers M15W, Avers M70W, Clear Touch's DC100, and Ipivo's VZX. Let's kick things off with the first and most important category, wireless casting. First up, Hovercam's Ultra 10. Right out of the gate, you need to know that Ultra 10 has a different wireless casting technology than the other cameras. While the others use methods that require or interfere with an existing Wi-Fi network, Ultra 10 has Hovercast, an ultra high bandwidth wireless casting technology that's 30 times the speed of Wi-Fi based methods. With Hovercast, you'll get uncompressed 4K resolution at 30 frames per second with flawless clarity, perfect color, and no visible delay, straight to your display. Setup is a breeze. Just plug the included receiver into your display and you're ready to go. No passwords to enter or networks to set up. Plus, you can flip up Ultra 10's Hovercast antenna for better range. Ultra 10 also supports Miracast, which connects to a dongle that you plug into your display. While Miracast can interfere with your existing Wi-Fi network, it's easy to set up with Ultra 10's built-in touchscreen. Once set up, you'll get full HD resolution at 60 frames per second with decent clarity, good color, and barely noticeable delay. Ultra 10 is also the only camera that lets you wirelessly stream through an internet browser. Just scan the QR code with your phone, tablet, or computer, and you're good to go. Screencast streams HD video at 30 frames per second with decent clarity, good color, and around 500 milliseconds of delay. And as a plus, when using Screencast, you can remotely control Ultra 10 with your device. All right, let's move on. The next three cameras rely on Miracast to send their wireless images. Remember, while Miracast doesn't require a Wi-Fi network to set up, it can slow down your nearby networks as it fights for a channel. Let's take a look at Elmo's MA1. Setting up Elmo's Miracast is easy with their built-in touchscreen, so long as you have a Miracast dongle ready, which is not included. Once set up, you'll achieve 720p resolution near a choppy 10 frames per second. Clarity is less than perfect, with some heavy mosaic caused by compression as the camera compensates for limited bandwidth. On the bright side, color looks great, and the setup was easy, so long as you can cope with a half second of delay. Let's move on to Aver's cameras. The Aver M15W also uses Miracast. That is, if you can get it set up. Because Aver doesn't have a screen, you'll need another, that's right, a second display just to connect to the first one. After connecting directly to that second display with an HDMI cable, next you'll have to click through the finicky button setup to activate Miracast mode, wait for it to load, search for your dongle until it pops up, then finally initiate the connection process. If you've managed to successfully connect to your display, which actually took me 30 minutes and a lot of button mashing, you can finally lose that second display. On the bright side, the M15W has good 4K image at 30 frames per second with good clarity, well, until you start to fight with your Wi-Fi and get some mosaic from the compression. Color is a little bit on the oversaturated side, and delay is minor at around 300 milliseconds. Just don't lose connection or you'll have to go through that all over again. The M15W also has a point-to-point -point mode where you can stream video to your PC. 
But after hours of troubleshooting, reading through manuals and factory resetting, I never got it to work. I did, however, get this feature to work on the M15's big brother, the Aver M70W. And speaking of the big brother, let's take a look at Aver M70W's wireless performance. This camera also has Miracast, and you'll need a second display to set this one up too, along with a Miracast dongle. But, funny story, we never got this one to work either. Seeing a trend here? So after hours, and I really mean hours, of trying multiple Miracast dongles, factory resetting, and exhausting every option, I finally gave up. So let's just assume, when working, the M70W's Miracast quality is identical to its little brother's. Now, in an ironic turn of events, the P2P mode on the M70W did work while its little brothers didn't. After plugging in the included dongle, installing Aver's app, and a couple minutes of connecting to the camera, the point-to-point -point video performance is okay. You'll get 1080 resolution at around 30 frames per second with decent clarity and color, but a whopping three seconds of delay. All right, let's move away from Miracast cameras and focus on the Wi-Fi cameras. These last two cameras are in a different category as they only connect to a PC or smart device and don't cast directly to a display. Furthermore, when you connect your computer to one of these cameras, you lose internet connection. I repeat, you lose connection to the World Wide Web. Now that that's out of the way, I tried to connect the ClearTouch DC100 to my computer, but ran into some issues. See, after finally getting the software installed, which involved requesting and waiting for a special license key, I kept getting the same error over and over. Even after the license key was deemed active and accepted, this error would not go away. So I tried to connect it with my phone, and lo and behold, it worked. As for streaming quality, the DC100 achieved a decent 1080p, but only at a distracting 10-ish frames per second. Clarity on my phone was good as far as I could tell, but the picture was a bit distorted and squished. Color was okay, and delay was about half a second. Last but certainly, well, maybe it's actually tied for least with the clear touch. Uh, anyways, the iPivo VZX. So iPivo's wireless setup was pretty straightforward. I just connected to the camera's Wi-Fi network, downloaded and installed the app, and voila! When we filmed this, the streaming quality wasn't that bad at 1080p at around 15 frames per second with okay clarity and less than perfect color, but delay was volatile, ranging from anywhere between half a second and 10 seconds of delay. You're really just at the mercy of your Wi-Fi connection strength. And again, when you connect the iPivo VZX to your computer, you lose internet connection. And that wraps up the wireless casting section. Hovercam's Ultra 10 is the clear winner with the best wireless video specs, easiest setup, and the simple fact that it's the only one that doesn't interfere with your Wi-Fi. All right, so now that we've gone over wireless performance, let's compare wired HDMI quality and some other image-related specs. The Hovercam Ultra 10 performance model can output HDMI at an astonishing, uncompressed 4K at 60 frames per second. That's fast. The Ultra 10 also has the largest camera sensor at 16 megapixels. That's twice the amount of pixel data of 4K. That large sensor and uncompressed video make text appear sharp and crisp, and allows the Ultra 10 to zoom without a loss in clarity. With a total zoom of 400 times, tiny details are clearly displayed in ultra high definition. The Elmo MA1's HDMI port outputs 1080p at 30 frames per second, with a bit of delay. Its 8 megapixel sensor is half the size of Ultra 10's, and the 16 times lossy digital zoom is not to be desired. Aver's M15W pushes out a decent 4K at 30 frames per second via HDMI, thanks to their 13 megapixel sensor. The M15 can zoom in 23 times, but that's lossy digital zoom. However, Aver's M70W is the closest to beating Hovercam's Ultra 10 with a comparable 4K resolution at 60 frames per second. If it wasn't for the oversaturated colors, it might have taken the top spot. However, the M70W sensor is smaller than Ultra 10's, coming in at 13 megapixels. It compensates for this with 10 times optical zoom. This makes the camera bulky and heavy, but provides 230 times total zoom. The ClearTouch DC100 doesn't even have HDMI, and its 5 megapixel sensor is the smallest of them all, so we'll just move on.
Lastly, iPivo's VZX can output HDMI, but you need to inconveniently plug it into a power source first. HDMI output is apparently 1080p at 60 frames per second, but geez, the image is laggy and trippy. Plus, its 8 megapixel sensor and 12 times lossy digital zoom is nothing to write home about. All right, I gotta keep this video under 15 minutes, so let's speed this up. In this last section, we'll fire off final comparisons on user friendliness, software, recording, storage, and battery life. Sounds good? Let's go. So we already touched on the Hovercam Ultra 10 7 inch multi touchscreen, which makes the camera incredibly easy to use. The screen supports features like pinch to zoom and annotation, and made setting up the wireless casting quick and easy. But thanks to the built in Android OS, you can install your favorite apps for remote teaching, web browsing, online videos, augmented reality, smart grading, and so on. Hovercam's built in app lets you record lessons right onto the device's 64 gigabyte solid state drive so you can share them with your students through the app of your choosing. And the six to eight hour battery life will get you through the whole teaching day. Now the Elbow MA1 also has a touchscreen backed by Android, but it's smaller than the Ultra 10s at only five inches and the software is much slower. Still, controlling and setting up the camera is much easier with the touchscreen. Recording videos is possible, but it's five gigabyte hard drive and two and a half hour battery life limits how much you can actually use the camera. Both the Aver cameras lack screens, making wireless setup a very painful process. Even once you're up and running, the minimal clicky button setup is annoying and hard to use. The Aver M70W comes with a remote, which adds a bit of convenience, but nothing can replace the user friendliness of a touchscreen. No annotation, no apps, and no built-in storage. So you can't record directly onto the cameras. Lastly, each one can only get about two and a half hours of battery life. Finally, the ClearTouch DC100 and iPivo VZX are the least user-friendly options. Both disconnect your computer from the internet when used wirelessly, both lack screens, and both need a smart device to accomplish basic document camera functions. Therefore, they have no onboard annotation, apps, or internal recording. And because we couldn't get the ClearTouch camera working properly, we don't know its battery life, but iPivos can last upwards of nine hours. Woo! I think that's everything. So in the end, I think we can all agree that the Hovercam Ultra 10 has the best wireless quality without interfering with Wi-Fi, easiest setup, largest camera sensor, biggest touchscreen, best software features, largest internal storage, and so on. Think I'm full of it? Well, get one and try it out yourself. See, at the end of the day, I know which wireless document camera I want in my classroom.